Welcome back to the SSAS training sessions. In last session, we discussed about a lot of MDX functions, right? Which is helpful for navigating horizontal navigation and vertical navigation of an attribute hierarchy and user defined hierarchy. And we also discussed about uh, sets and tuples. <coughs> let's go back to sets for a minute. So let's say I want a sales amount on zero comma and um, let's say i'd like to go for a product and if i expand this i can see different colors I, I i initially i requested only black color product on one from cube name so what this guy will return is <coughs> sorry black color product sale someone now if you want to add one more product one more color sorry uh let's say you want to retrieve even white color sales white color product sales now these two hierarchies are same and uh, this forms a set so this is how you can normally query uh, more than one member by with the help of set definition now what i would like to explain here is <clears throat> the difference between black and this black so if you have ampersand before the square brackets here or before the member name then that means it is referring to the key column of the attribute so what attribute it is it is color attribute hierarchy and black is the member and when when you see ampersand that means it is referring to the key column of it and if you don't see ampersand it is referring to the name column of it so if you execute it even this works fine it returns the black and white color products but internally it will be referring to the name column whereas this white it is referring to the key column then white is returning data when you use ampersand on and even without ampersand the reason is if you go to the project that we're designed for the color attribute there is no name column defined only key column defined that is color as far as i know let me go and uh, let me have a quick check about that if you go to the product dimension and if you go to the <coughs> color attribute and uh, you can see both are color the key column as well as the name column are color that is why the key column values will be color values the name column values will be color values that is why it is written uh, the data even with ampersand or without ampersand let's assume there is a case like uh, english month name if you go to the due date dimension um i think the month name english month name if you go to that here it should be month name here it is month name what let's assume you have a month number here instead of month name the key column is set to month number then the values here when you have an ampersand it will be not jan and feb for example let me drag and drop english month name here this guy okay if i drag and drop it's giving me ampersand april <coughs> correct now let me change it to english month number instead of name uh, or i can see month number of the year and now the key column is month number and the name column is, is english month name let me quickly deploy it and process it because i changed the uh, metadata oops um this is something problem let me do one thing the measure group fact analysis order date the key column has zero vacar let me go to the cube <clears throat> let me delete this for now let me go to this cube and let me quickly go here and see this is creating some problem order date the default attribute this is fine just it's it changed the structure right so it is asking me to just come here and save it once now this is all set so if you process it still there are some errors let's see where it is order date english month name the tribute column okay let me do this order date due date and ship date i can correct it but uh, better than correction it this is pretty easy okay let me add it back the date dimension and let's see whether we get the same error okay this is gone 
so the metadata mismatch between the cube and the dimension, database dimension, cube dimension and the database dimension. That's why it was causing the problem. So let me process it quickly. Now, remember the for English month name attribute hierarchy, the key column is month number and the name column is um, what we have given, month name, English month name. So once it is processed, let me query the database. Okay, done. Now let me refresh it quickly. Okay, due date, English month name. And let's say I like to go with Feb. And if I drag and drop, you can see it's ampersand two. So if I use this ampersand two here, this works fine. This returns the data, but it queries the database. For, I mean, using the key column, and it returns February data. Now, if you remove this ampersand two, let's see what it returns. It will look for two in the name column, and it won't find anything like that. Then it's written nothing, right? So if I give the name, if I don't have ampersand, if I, and if I give the name, uh, the name column value, then it works fine. So whatever you are seeing here is the name column values. And the key column will be inside, hidden, behind this, every name. If you drag and drop it, you'll get the key column of it. So this is very important thing to remember. Whenever you see the ampersand, that means you're acquiring the key column. And when you don't see the ampersand in this uh, member, whenever you are referring a member in your MDX query, that means it is the name column of that. <coughs> now, let's go back to the yesterday's last query that is head and tail, right? We discussed about head and tail, head of 10 or something like that. So let me go for that again. So I'll take a simple MDX query. And instead of uh, a particular member, I'm gonna give um, let's say product name, English product name. There are a lot of products. This is the best example. If you see here, if I execute it, it gives all the product level sales and there is nulls and uh, you know if you don't want to have nulls, you can have non-empty, but not now. Let, let's discuss about non-empty again. Uh, when we discuss about non-empty function, there is one function which sounds like non-empty keyword. When we discuss about that, we will read, uh, we'll revisit that non-empty keyword again. So here, <laughs> I'm interested in head. Head of, let's say, 10. And if you see here, all the attributes, attribute members are ordered in ascending order based on the key column or the name column, but it's in ascending order. If I execute uh, head of uh, 10, what it will do is it will give me top 10 based on the order that it, return, it returns, right, the data. So. It, uh, by default, <clears throat> if you specify the order by property in the attributes, if you go to the dimension, let's say customer, if you go to birth date, if you go to the properties of it, there is an order by key. That means it, this particular attribute will be ordered based on the key column of it. The key column is birth date. So when you drag and drop, drop this attribute, it will be ordered based on the birth date for this particular attribute hierarchy. Because while processing, it will order in the particular order definition that we have provided. So, but the measures are not ordered. This will not be ordered by default. When you process, it won't be ordered. It will be based on whatever the attributes that are ordered, attribute members that are ordered. So, uh, if you use head, it is gonna fetch only top 10. And in the same way, if you use tail, it's gonna fetch only last 10. Most of the cases, the requirement will be like this. Get me top 10 sales products or get me bottom 10 sales products something like that you don't look for uh, null values you don't expect null values in the result set for the sales amount if you execute top 10 or bottom 10 so what we can what function we can use to get up uh, or to order the measures basically we have a function called order so you can use order function to get like um, to, to basically order the measures Okay, let's see an example. <coughs> I'm using the same, and I'm not gonna use head function for now. Okay, order. I'm telling the server to order this English product name, or I can have more than one. I'll show you that example too. Um, 
how you want to uh, based on what measure you want to order or what measure you want to order here in this case so i want to order based on sales amount how you want to order let's say if i provide ascending if i execute it you can see the data the sales amount is ordered in ascending order if you go till to the last you'll get the maximum value so this is how the order by function works now let me copy the same query and instead of ascending i'll give descending you can see the values ordered in descending order like this so this is how you can order the measures or order the result set based on measures so this is very 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 important because you need to display highest product sales and the least product sales but not the products based on the alphabetical order or something like that if you use head function it will be ordered it will be fetched it will return only the top 10 uh, alphabetical order products or al alphabetical order colors so this is how you can order if you have one attribute let's say what uh, you can do if you have multiple attributes so inside this this is the one you are i mean sorry from here uh, english product name is the one which you want to order right so here you can have a tuple instead of a one single attribute level. Let's say I'm including color two. If I add color, oops, sorry. Okay, and comma, and <coughs> so what will happen is first this tuple will form, and then it will order. Let's see how the data will. I mean, how the result set will be if I execute this. If you see first it cross joined these two and it executed the result and then it ordered so based on the um, sales amount so you can use n number of attribute hierarchies like this this is basically a tuple of uh, um, a tuple set a, a, a tuple okay so you can use tuple in the order function and you can provide you as a second parameter you have to provide the measure based on what you want to order and the third parameter says whether it's ascending order and the descending order so here let me go back let me go here and um, let's say i don't want to order based on sales amount i want to order based on let's say discount amount so based on the discount amount i want you to get uh, in the descending <coughs> descending order now the order looks different because you don't you you are not seeing the discount amount on the columns you are seeing the sales amount but ordering based on the discount amount so you can order based on third measure which is not part of your result set also if you want to see whether it's ordering fine or not what you need to do is just simply add that to your columns and make it as a set and this guy should work as expected okay discount amount everything is zero everything is null there is no value that's why it's giving this order okay like it's i mean i have taken the wrong measure better you take some other measure which has some value so that you can clearly see whether it's ordering based on that or not so this is about order of a function if you want to get the top five sales or top uh, i mean bottom five sales what you can do here is you can simply use the two functions one is order and another one is head or tail let me take this simple query which fetches me order by sales descending now the order by sales i mean order by product sales descending now if i want to get top 10 uh, what do you say top 10 performing products what you can do simply order it first by descending order then use head if you use head on top of this first what it will do is it will order it first this guy will be executed the internal one will be executed and it will return the result set to the head function head function will take that and it will filter only the top 10 and display top 10 products and if you see here it ordered in the descending order and it picked the top 10 so this is how we can uh, get the top 10 performing products from the database similarly if you want to get bottom 10 i mean least 10 you can do it many ways you can use tail is one way which means it will get the last n, which is always null or simply by using instead of descending if you ascending it so it will be a first ascending or it will arrange the 
products and the sales amount in the ascending order based on the sales amount and then you are getting top 10 that means the least performing products so the order uh, with ascending and descending along with head or tail will be very helpful will make uh, a report or uh, the, i mean will allow you to pull the important information like top 10 products top 20 products bottom 10 products and so on so this is very useful function order and head so um, we need to use two functions to get this information there is one more function okay the function uh, actually there are multiple functions top count and bottom count so what this guy will do is this this guy will do the job of both head and order if you use top count first it will order and it will get the top n number of let's see a, a quick example here so i'm using simple uh, products by sales amount okay if i execute it it will give me all the products and all the sales amount based on the order of the attribute hierarchy now i'm using the same query to use uh, top count and the bottom count so the top count function you need to specify something like this top count of what you want to give you can provide a tuple or set okay so top count of english product name how many you want i want 10 and based on what you want i want top count of sales amount so you are not going to specify ascending or descending because you are informing the server top means top performing 10 products sales amount and so on if you see first it orders it do the it does the job of order by function and then it does the job of a head function so two functions in one thing but the syntax is a little different you have to use top count of a set or tuple uh, as first parameter and the second parameter is an integer which says that how many you want uh, it, it is a numeric value 10 20 30 40 50 and so on and the third parameter is based on what you want top count you can give um, sales amount or you can give top count based on some other measure which is not part of your result set something like currency key if i give currency key what it will do is it will order by currency key and it will get top 10 sales product if you see this is not in order actually this is not in um, this these are not top 10 products but currency key wise these are top 10 products if you order the result set english product name based on currency key in the descending order these products will come in the top 10 list so this is about top count pretty straightforward function and uh, i i hope i don't need to explain about bottom count so the bottom count is exactly opposite to that it will order and it will get the bottom 10 whatever it is the last 10 it will get the last 10 information it's more like um, um, order by and the tail so the head top count and bottom count is replacement for kind of not exact replacement kind of replacement for order plus head and order plus tail functions so this is how this is more frequently used people very few guys will use order and top uh, i mean order and head but most of the cases people use top count and bottom count to get the top 10 performing products or top n number of performing products and uh, uh, least performing n number of products so that is about top count and bottom count similarly we have uh, top percent and bottom percent so it's the same as top count and bottom count the only difference is it gives the percentage of so this is a pretty good one let let me show you so instead of top count the function will be top percent okay and english product name let's say here i have to i have to mention the percentage of it let's say i have given 50 percent it's again 0 to 100 if i give 50 it will be 50 percent so what it will do is it will give you the top n number of products whose sales will be 50 percent of the total sales okay now let me show you this in in real i'm executing this 
using order by function just to get these values into Excel. Don't worry about this. Order by sales amount descending. Okay. So this guy will give me the product descending Y sales. If I copy all the sales amount into an Excel, oops, sorry, I pressed the wrong key. Uh, I copy all the things. Let me paste it in Excel. I, I copied all the values here. So if you go till the end, the total sum is something like this. Let me calculate the sum. Sum of okay. This is the total sum. Let me bring it to top so that it will be easy for me. Oops. Sorry, the reference has been gone. Um, okay, let me take the value from here, where I copied that. Okay, here is the total sum. Now, this is the total sum, sales amount of all the products. And what I'm doing here is, I asked the server to give top 50% of the products. That means the product sales, which will form very close to 50%, not exactly 50%, but close to 50%. Now let me copy these guys from here. And if I sum this, this will be very close to 50%. If you see 47, 65 and so on. If I remove the fourth one, this will be very far from the 50%. Okay. It is like 40,000 or 4 lakhs less. If I add this, it will be little more than 50% of the total sales. If you see this is total sales and this is very close to 50% of the total sales. Uh, so what it will try to do is it will try to get the closest 50% or the percentage mark that you have given. I have given 50 here. Let's say I give uh, 25%. Let's see how many it will return. I think one or two max. So it, it's returning two. If I take these sales here and these two sales, some of these two will form a very close to quarter of this total sales. So that is how the top percent work. The top percent is basically you have to give the attribute level or the set or triple which you want to uh, uh, out of which you want to get the top performing in uh, percentage of uh, sales and uh, second parameter should be like percentage it should be 0 to 100 and third one is like what measure so if you want to get the sales amount top 25 percent uh, of all the products then it will return the products of sales which will form 25% of the total sales. Similarly, if you go for bottom percent, so what it will do is it will give you the products from the descending order, I mean from ascending order from zero to max and this sum of these products will form 25% of the total. Let's see how many I have and how much it's going to form. Uh, from here, to here and if you see the value is 2752949 which is close to quarter of it 25% of the total sales so that is how the top percent and the bottom percent worked now let me copy the same queries i don't want to write the queries again and to discuss about the third set of uh, functions top sum and bottom sum so the top sum it will be like sum of the value. Okay. Let's say I want to get a integer value 000. How many products, top end products, will form this value, this much of value? If I execute it, it will try to execute order by and it will get okay, these two values, the two top performing products will come to a close value the, of the what I have provided. So if I take these two, it will be very close to 25 lakhs, I think. Yeah, 25 lakhs. Okay. Similarly, bottom if I give 25 lakhs and bottom sum. So the sum of sales amount of the products in the ascending order, starting from zero sales to maximum one, and the top n number of products which will form 25 lakh of sales. Now let me take it here. I copied it and let me go to the sum. Oops. Here. And if you see, it is 2752949, very close to that one. It tries to give the closest and the best match possible. So that is how the top sum and the 
bottom sum, top percent, bottom percent, top count, bottom count, and order functions work. So this is about uh, top and bottom, and these are very very useful functions in uh, uh, in real time projects. You will be using these top, particularly top count and the bottom count. Uh, functions a lot than the remaining even top sum and sorry top percent and bottom percent is uh, very frequently used but I don't see top sum because you have to provide a value um, like sales of 50 lakhs or 25 lakhs you cannot fix that value right so that is why uh, people don't use this top sum and bottom sum today the sales if it is 50 50 lakhs dollars that sales might be good you may think like that and you will give the value of 50 lakhs and tomorrow I mean, after a few months, uh, you may think that one 10 million is uh, 10 million dollars is the sales you have to look for. So then you can't come here and change. That is why you people look for top 10 or top 20 or bottom 10 or bottom 20, something like that. Okay. Now let's discuss about very important and very interesting concept calculations. So you might you heard about these calculations in SSAS, and um, I told you you need to know MDX very well to write calculations in SSAS. Now let's try to create calculations and in um, MDX. So for that, let me take a new page. So there are three different scopes for the calculations. One is database level. If you create the calculation in the database level, then it will be available for anyone who has access to that okay that means if i create a calculation in the cube uh, let me quickly create one calculation i'm not going to create a complex one mm. so let me create a simple calculation i'll name it as dummy um, I am not mummy. Let's say this is my calculation and I just I am deploying it. I'm not I don't need to process it as you, as I told you this is a calculation and you just need to deploy it. So let me quickly deploy it. I think it's uh, I have not written any calculation like this in recent past that's why. Okay, it is deployed. Now what I need to do is just simply refresh it and let's see whether the calculation is added. Yes, it is. Select. Um, I'm dragging and dropping this dummy on zero. Come on. Uh, let's say I'll drag and I'll go with color on one from cube so if you execute it, it will get all the colors and it will put I'm not mummy, the value, the hard coded value. I have created a very simple calculation with some hard coded value. So it is returning the same here. So these calculations are called database level calculation. The scope is database level and people who, who have access to the particular database and particular calculation can view that. Now, the second one is you, you can create a calculation using with keyword and create keyword. So you can create or you can use with. If you use with, that is query scope. So this calculation will be available until the query execution is complete. Once the query is executed, then the calculation will not be available to query. Okay. And if you use create keyword, this is session scope. That means if I create a calculation in this query window it will be available until i close this query window only in this query window I, I i can't use that in the other query window like here if i try to query that i won't get that let me quickly show you the scope first and we can um, where is that okay and then uh, one example for each scope and then we can create complex calculations first using the with the syntax is with member give the name of it i'm giving it as measures dot mummy 
don't worry about the names and the calculation syntax that I'm giving. Uh, this is just for uh, showing the scope as I am mummy. Okay, now I'm using the dummy and the mummy in my query. These two calculations. One calculation is database scope level and the another one is query scope level. So these two will form a set and now let me execute it. If I execute while execution, I have to select width and everything here. If I execute it, you can see the dummy as well as mummy calculation calculated measures are returning the data. Now this is executed. Now if I'm executing without selecting that with statement. If I execute it, it will say the mummy member was not found. So that means this is query level. Whenever you execute the query, you have to select that and after the execution of the query, it will not be stored, it will not be available anywhere. But the other one dummy which I created at the database level is available. So this is the um, scope like um, query scope. Now create member. I have to give cube name. I don't remember this exactly to be honest. Test as um, I am a test. Okay. If I execute it, the test calculator member cannot be created because a member with the same name already exists. Somewhere it exists. Okay. Let me give test one. Okay, now I created a calculated member in this query, uh, sorry, in this uh, query window. I'm going with the same query again. You know, right, the with cal the calculated member I have created using, I have written using the with keyword that has to be included whenever I refer to that. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna refer this. I don't need to give the cube name, oops, sorry, but I need to give the calculated measure name. So let me execute it without selecting the create and let's see whether it returns the data or not. It returns the data. It doesn't care how many times you execute it, it returns the data. Now let me copy the same into the new query window. Let me execute it and you can see the test one was not found because the test one I created in this session. The session means a query window that I open. So that is available only in this session and until I close this session. So these are the three sessions that you can use or you can create the calculated member. Um, so most of the cases people define at the cube level or the database level and very few cases people create using uh, query level, query scoped calculated members and very, 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 very rare cases they'll create at the session level. Very, very rare. I, I, I've never seen people but they, I don't say there will be no one who will be creating at the uh, session level but there will be. So this is about now if I execute this query n number of times in this uh, query window this will be fine but if I go to the another query window it says that test one is not available. This is about the scope of the calculations. Now let's jump into a little complex calculations. Let me take out this dummy from here instead of that I'll add sales amount and here instead of mummy let me take out this mummy from here first. Let's give some serious calculations. Let's write some serious calculations. Uh, before going there, before doing that, okay. Here you can see black color product and I mean color wise, sales amount. Now my requirement is to create the percentage of it. Okay, this is the value of the black color. What is the total percentage of, uh, what is the percentage of the black color sales compared with the total sales, right? That is a most important and very frequently used calculation. Let's try to write that. Before writing that, I'd like to show one thing here. We discussed about previous member and next member in last session, these two functions. In this function, I would like to show the current member, uh, the next frequently used, or the very frequently used function in uh, real time. So to demonstrate that with member, uh, I'll give the name as current member example. Okay, I'll give it as CME current member example as 
So what I'm doing here is I'm taking this hierarchy. So current member accepts only hierarchy. So current mem product dot color dot current member dot name. So the current member here will return the current member of it. Dot name will return will convert it into a string. So you cannot display the member value. You can display the string value in the calculations. I'll show you that. Oh, sorry. I have not included that CME in uh, my query. Let me execute it now. And you can see the current member name is written in here. If I return, if, if I take out this, so every row, it, 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 it calculated measures executes row by row. Okay. While executing the first row, what it will do, it will take the current member of the color attribute. What is the color attribute current member? It is nothing but black for the first row. For the second row, it is blue. For the third row, it is gray. For the fourth row, it is multi. For the fifth row, N is red, silver, silver or black, white and yellow. So that is what it is returning. If I take out this, if I execute it, here it's showing null because this is a member. Member is something like this. If I copy it, that is a member, right? And if I paste it here, oops, it didn't copy properly. If I copy it, if I paste it, this is a member. Member will have a lot of properties like caption and name and unique name, description, level name, level depth, and so on. So here I'm asking for name. So if I ask for name, it returns only the name because the calculated measures return either integer or string values. You cannot have this caption, the complete member information. That is why people use to do like current member dot name. Okay. So if you use current member dot name, it helps to display what is the current uh, row color that is in the result set. Now, why I explained about this current member? Because we are going to use that. Okay. Now, the requirement set for us is like to calculate the percentage of the sales amount based on each color. So, here I'm writing a calculated measure with member. Um, the name is measures dot sales percentage as let me write the fun I mean the uh, expression here so the expression what I'm gonna write here is first I'll do step by step my requirement is to get the sales amount how can I get the percentage of it I need to have the sales amount and I need to have the total sales amount this divided by this into 100 will give you the percentage correct so first thing at first place I need sales amount okay so let me use the sales amount and see whether it works fine or not this is how I did when I when I was a beginner in MDX so I used to split the calculation into multiple levels and I used to achieve step by step because MDX was not so easy and there was no much support in the internet too when I started career on MDX so I'm executing the same query but instead of this measures dot sales percentage so if I execute it what it will do is under the sales percentage and the sales amount it's showing the same value because the expression that I've given is the same if I do into 100 it will be the value into 100 the sales amount into 100 then what I have to do divided by Total sales amount. How can I get the total sales amount? If you have an aggregation function, is aggregatable property set to true, what you can do? You can get the color for every row, get the color dot current member. What it will return, it will return black. Dot parent will take you where? The parent will take you to all. You remember that I can quickly show you that instead of current member dot name I am giving current member dot parent dot name it will return all member of it oh, there is no name or there is no all member defined for that 
okay there is no all member defined for that yesterday we removed it right so better use something else where we have some values uh, because there is no parent for it or you have to do uh, a little tough calculation which we will be see which we can see in the next session and do you remember yesterday we removed the all function for this is aggregatable property i removed it so let me take english product name for now sorry for the confusion so i'm taking the hierarchy of this dot current member dot parent here to see whether it is returning all or not okay so if i execute it oops there is where it went wrong okay this guy has all so this is null that is why it's not calculating all 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 i don't know why these guys does not have all okay that's fine so something like this if you if you go for parent it will give you the all member so what i want all member sales amount so this is a tuple if i form a tuple what will happen it will give you it will calculate and it will give you all member sales amount and to make it more easy let me go for only non empty so if i execute it oops this is something wrong let me fix this one guys um i got it the problem the problem is with uh, i I'm, I'm, i'm using this hierarchy english product name but i'm using color dot parent how can i get color dot parent it's my bad so here um, this is something wrong i have given so let's try to execute and see whether it returns the data or not for the non empty and if you see this is the value sales amount of the product and it, this is 0.12% of the total product sales and um, if if you sum this it should come close to 100 or it should come to 100 let's see whether it comes or not i hope it will let's see and you can see the sum is 100 so it, because it's a percentage right i'm calculating each and every product sales percentage based on total sales product and now um you can use format string do you remember while creating the calculations we used format you can use the same comma format underscore string is equal to you can give you can specify percent but remember if you specify percent automatically it will do into 100 so you don't need to specify it the advantage of specifying percentage is it will do in 200 and also it will trim, it will trim it to 2 by 2 uh, decimals and you'll add the percentage symbol so let me take the same calculation and let me do it in uh, let me explain it in a better way um because it's very important to understand the calculations how these oops sorry how these guys evaluate the first step what i'm doing here is i'm i'm splitting into multiple calculations one single calculation into multiple calculation to to explain you step by step with member my requirement is sales divided by total sales correct with member um i i name it as sales as measures dot sales amount so the first calculated measure will return the sales of it okay and if i execute it this guy will return sales amount whatever it is there for every product it returns now i'm adding one more calculated member remember only for the first time you need to specify with and for the second time onwards you need to continue with uh, you need to start with member uh parent i'm taking its parent okay as this guy dot current member dot parent dot name i'm trying to get the parent of it right for every product the parent should be all then only we can get that information let's see whether it's returning the correct information or not okay now if you see okay i'm getting all for chaining all for uh, full finger gloves and everything so the third thing is member total sales as what is the total sales the parent 
of sales amount, right? If I use this, this guy will give me the parent that means all, comma. If I specify sales amount, it returns the sales amount at all member level. So we are enforcing to get the sales amount at all member level. Now, let me give this in my select statement. Oops, sorry. Total sales. And if I execute it, the first calculation will give me the sales amount. The second calculation will give me the sales amount. Third one will give the parent and the fourth one will give all. I'm, I'm forcing the server to give all member sales amount for every row. So that is why it is returning the same data. Now the fourth one is our actual requirement. Measures the sales percentage. As I can use already existing calculator measures or simply I can write my own calculator measure like this. This divided by this. Okay. And I can give format string is equal to percent because this is percentage. Now let me add this one here in the return set sales percentage and if I execute it now you can see the step by step execution what happened and why I split this into different and uh, how it returns the data. If you see here null, null, all uh, and null and this is 0.12%, 0.14% 0.14 and so on. So this is how you can use and you can see there are some few few products which is which is performing really good like 2% of total products or 3% of total products. So this is how I split into multiple steps like first I analyze the formula. The formula should be like total sales amount divided by total sales amount. If you see here the parent here I'm forcing it to give me the parent I mean uh, all member sales amount. Similarly you can force it for any member like uh, let me show let me write one more uh, particular sales. I'll name it as particular product sales actually. Let me name it as particular sales. Here, instead of giving this, I'm hard coding a value. Let's say, let me take one simple one which is easy to write uh, and which has some value. Okay, let me take this guy. Half, finger, gloves, L, okay? So I'm hard coding the value here. Half, finger, gloves, comma, L. I think I have given it correct. Now, uh, instead of total, uh, next to total sales, I'm giving this guy particular sales calculator measure. If I execute it, I'm forcing the server to give that particular product sales for everything. If you go to half finger gloves, it's 1089.069. And you can see for particular product sales, I'm forcing. Similarly, you can force dot parent sales, which will give you parent information, right? Which is uh, all in this case. If you have a user defined hierarchy, you can play with it, the, these kind of calculations. And it's easy to play with these kind of calculations. So now uh, you can see here, I'm forcing a particular product sales. And here I'm forcing to return all product sales and here I am calculating the sales. So this is how you have to analyze and understand the requirement and uh, you can create, but all these calculations are waste. The first four calculations, the only calculation that I'm gonna need here is total percentage to show you how you have to break up and how I analyzed and how I created the calculation. I created these dummy calculations. So this is how you can create calculation. This is one simple one. And if you have hierarchies, then you can create more and more calculations like this. Now, let me do one thing. I'm going to create one calc. Uh, let me show you one thing. You know, this is an expression. This expression works fine when you have English product name. Because it is taking the current member. When you don't have English product name, let's say you have color it gives entirely different result, unexpected results. So let me execute it. So I'm, I don't have English product name in my query at all. So it will be taking all and you can see the percentage because it requires English product name, okay? That you have to be very careful. If you define a calculation, that means a particular thing is required.
for the for the MDX query to execute. I mean, while executing the MDX, while using this calculator member in the MDX query, you need to have a particular thing. In this case, it is English product name. Now, you know, this is the expression, okay? I told you, if you know MDX, then it's easy to write the calculation in MDX, and then you can create the same in the uh, cubes. Now, I copied the expression. I am going here. I'm creating a new calculation sales percentage and I'm copying the expression and what I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna add the format string and a couple of other basic stuff let's say format string I set it to percentage and uh, let's say calculations is the folder where I want to show the all these calculations even this one in the calculations folder now if I deploy it, so what I normally do is I create the calculation in the MDX, I test it very well and then I copy the expression and I simply create it, I add it to my calculation, calculated, calculations page. Now let me refresh it, or let me select this guy and I don't need this anymore. At least this particular um, sales percentage because I have it in my calculations. So it is here. So that is at the database level. And if I execute it, it should work fine. You can see it is taking the sales percentage. So how easy it is creating the calculations in SSAS if you're good in MDX. What you need to do is you need to create the one in MDX and um, then you need to use it in the um, SSAS projects. Now let's let's create one more calculation. The requirement is always to get the percentage of a parent. That means uh, I have a user defined hierarchy. Let's say the calculation is for shipment date. Okay. If I select a particular month sales, let's say for a particular quarter, this quarter sales, then it has to give the percentage of its parent. Okay. Uh, percentage. I mean to say like you have two quarters in one semester and your calculation should give the percentage at any level they are in okay i'll write the calculation and then i'll explain it with member before going to that let me write the select statement select on zero comma Let's say I'm taking quarter one of 2013, 14. Okay, that's fine. On one from cube name. So this guy will return the quarter information. So a sem the, the parent of this quarter is a semester and semester will have two quarters. So if this is 50%, 40% of the sales of uh, that um, came from the quarter, from the semester, then the remaining 60 will be from the quarter two. Similarly, quarter three has 30% sales of semester two, then 70% will be for the quarter four. So it's it's always like for parent, whatever the hierarchy you are in, whatever the level you are in, that should be at the parent level. So what I'm gonna do here is this is the hierarchy and I'm writing a calculation. Uh, ship sales percentage, pretty awkward name, but please digest. My requirement here is sales amount first measures dot sales amount divided by again the same the current member dot parent okay comma sales amount. So that will give the parents sales amount. I don't care where, which level the hierarchy is in, but it will give the parents sales amount. And if I give it as percentage, as for uh, the format string as percentage, if I use the same calculation, which I've created in my select statement, you can see, how the data will be written for at, at any level. 
now I executed so this quarter does not have data for the second quarter it seems let's see quickly two yeah it is zero that is why the data is 100 percent for that let's do one thing i'm going for 2013 year quarter two the percentage is 53.2 percentage now if i go for quarter one it should be the remaining of the 100 right so if i execute it you can see it's 46.74 now what i'm going to do here is this calculation is working fine this expression is working fine i'm going to take this and uh, go here go here and i'll name it as ship sales percent and i'll select it as percentage uh, i'm sorry percentage as the format string and again the display folder as calculations now if you see i created this for a hard-coded hierarchy that is ship date user defined hierarchy let me deploy it and let's see how this works in excel you have to see this in excel because i'm not hard coding a particular level or a particular member of the hierarchy i'm just uh, defining this for the whole hierarchy whatever the level i mean whatever the member i mean it will take the parent and it will calculate the percentage so i'm going to excel enable and i'm going to take the sales amount and i'm going to take ship sales now it's uh, not returning because the minimum thing is not added now uh, ship date right ship date hierarchy okay i selected ship date hierarchy in the rows and if you see at first it calculated at um year level 2011 12 13 14 what it will do is it will get the parents information and it calculates it now if i expand this let's say i clicked on this uh, plus if i expand this now it expanded to two semesters semester one and semester two this is calculated at its parent level that is at year level so the nine percent of the total sales of the year sorry nine percent sales of the year which is of the total sales is split into 100% when it comes to the semesters because this guy's parent is 2011 this guy's parent is 2011 so it has taken this amount and it calculated this amount percentage this is 40% of the total sales of 2011 then this is 59.16% um, now if i expand this it will give the quarters will be split into percentage basis like among these two quarters available in the semester first one the third quarter is 44 percent and the second fourth quarter is 55 percent so one simple calculation you can calculate at any level any member whatever the member if you see i passed the member here i passed one two three and so on it's returning the data and if i go for 11 i don't know what is the percentage but it will calculate and give that this is the 41.15 percent this quarter one of 2011 is 41.15 percent of the semester that is semester one of 2011 if i give two quarter two of uh, semester one of year 2012 sorry 2011 is 58.85 percent of the total semester sales so one simple line of calculation if you want to write the same calculation in um, sql or relational databases it's going to take a lot of time if you see here how beautifully you can write the calculation and how uh, easy it is to cre create a calculation like this and whatever you split it will be giving and the grand total it is not returning because it uh, it's not having parent for the grand total ignore that and 2014 has only one semester and that semester has only one quarter and it is uh, that is why it is 100 percent and 100 percent so this is how you can write the calculations but the only problem that i can see here is the hard coding i mean to say you need to specify the hierarchy like you are specifying the hierarchy and if this hierarchy is not there then it is not going to return the data properly in next session we are going to see how we can make it more dynamic if it is more dynamic let's say the same formula the same sales percentage works fine for due date for order date any hierarchy or any attribute that is very beautiful right 
so we'll be discussing about that in next session and we'll be discussing about where class to slice um, the MDX queries which is very important and we'll be discussing about filters except and a lot of functions like that. Thank you for watching the video and catch you in next session. Have a great day. Bye-bye.